You're welcome to First Take with me, Jifa Bampo. Today, we are speaking to the government statistician, Professor Samuel Enim. In some 24 hours, we will start the countdown to this year's census, a once-in-a-decade activity. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Enim. Thank you very much for joining us on First Thank Take. Thank you, Jifa. All right. So this is um, a once-in-a-decade activity, the National Population and Housing Census. I understand this year's is a unique activity. Can you explain why? Thank you, Jifa. Indeed, in several respects, the 2021 Population Housing Census is unique in several respects. And one of the dominant features that makes it distinct from other previous censuses is the use of technology and the extent to which we are injecting um, technology in the 2021 population housing census. Let me give some specifics in terms of the technology that we are putting in place for the 2021 PAC. Anytime we talk about technology-driven sensors, people avert their minds to the use of tablets. But I'm always quick to say that although this is the first time we are using tablets in data collection for the sensors, it's not the first of its kind for Ghana Studies Car Service. We just did the Ghana Census of Agric, which we used the, which we used tablets, and also in our last um, Living Standard Survey, we used um, tablets. But what makes it technology-driven is improving on the resources around the use of tablets for the data collection. So one of the things that we've done to improve the use of tablets is the superimposition of geospatial resources to ensure that we have benchmark data and to improve the data collection process. So Just to interrupt you, when you talk about geospatial resources, that is then using technology to have an overview of the land and, and mass. Excellent. So ahead of the sensors, we have a lot of satellite imagery, which is giving us information on where structures are located in the country. So based on our international collaboration, we've had access to building footprints in all the 51,916 enumeration areas. This data set has been underlaid over, over the um, demarcation exercise that we did. And while we go through the enumeration areas, the enumerators are aware of where some of these um, structures are, like, are located to ensure that every structure is visited. Another way by which we think the 2021 Population Housing Census is using technology to make it a distinct exercise is the institutionalization of a data monitoring mechanism. So for the first time, we have a, data, a, a dashboard that has been developed. So for instance, as government statistician, I can view all that is happening in all the 51,916 enumeration areas. While is it I in sit real here. time? In real time. So once data is, is collected, we are able to benchmark the expected data that has to be collected in each district with what is actually being collected. And so you I, can actually keep track of how fast or how slow the process is going. Indeed, that is the essence. It is called an enumeration tracking dashboard. And you've, you've said it right. What it helps us to do is areas that we are falling short, areas that we are likely to finish ahead of time, and we've put in a workload management system which would allow us to improve on the, on the work that the enumerators are doing and also where we need to push in more enumerators to add on to a particular enumerator's work to ensure that all this work is done within the 28th and the 11th July that has been scheduled um, for this exercise. In terms of the uniqueness beyond technology, I want to touch on two other things, if you don't mind. One has to do with the decentralization of the work. In previous censuses, although we had decentralized the activities, it occasioned at the time of the data collection. But for the 2021 PAC, we did recruit district census officers ahead, four or five months ahead of the exercise. Indeed, prior to COVID-19, we had recruited them already. They started working, but for COVID-19, we disengaged their services. And once we were certain that we we're going to do it, now it's not just the DCOs that we've recruited. In addition to the district census officers, we have district IT persons, we have district field um, supervisors, and as I indicated, we have district data quality monitors. So we have a four-member team at the district level working with the district coordinating directors and seven other district census implementation committees to ensure that the census is really decentralized in terms of its implementation. And on the technology bit, I do know that there are many parts of our country that still have network challenges and connectivity issues. How have you resolved that then if you're going to use uh, technology through the tablets and, and other, um, you know, 
uh, technology to do this work? What we've done, and you are right to say that internet challenges are bound to occur because we are going to expect the enumerators to sync data in real time when they collect them from the respondents. In view of that, we've done two things. One, we've engaged with NCA. They've given us information on the network connectivity for the different um, telecos across the country. So we know where 4G works, we know where 3G works by different types of um, networks, and also where we don't have internet connectivity at all for all the three major networks that we have. In view of that, we are not expecting syncing of data via internet as the only option for getting data to head office. We have Bluetooth mechanism where the enumerators without internet, with Bluetooth, if they get into contact with their supervisors, the supervisors can then sync the data to HQ. And in areas where it would even be difficult for supervisors to sync data to um, the headquarters after receiving it from the um, enumerators, we are having district IT offices. As I, as I indicated, for the purposes of the census, we have 272 statistical districts. But because of internet challenges that we have across the country, we are recruiting 476 district IT officers so that they can work closely with the enumerators and supervisors. They would pick the data, move to a place where there is connectivity, and then the data gets to head office. So these are the two um, interventions that we are instituting to ensure that data moves from the enumerators to HQ in real time, either through Bluetooth by the supervisors or through the district IT offices. All right. In as much as um, this process is ongoing, there's always a talk of census night. You say it's on 27th June. Why is census night so important? Why is it a reference point? It is a refer reference point because we want to have a uniform responses, a harmonized responses across the days that we're going to do the data collection. The data collection is starting on 28th to the 11th of 28th of June to the 11th of July. You'll be interviewing some people on the 28th and others will be interviewing them on the 11th of July. You wouldn't want a situation where people would be making reference to questions using different dates. Once you do that, you are, you are not able to harmonize the responses so data analysis will not be accurate. So the reason why we do the census night is to remind everybody in Ghana that the questions that we are going to ask would, would be using 27th as a reference night. Let me give you a couple of examples. The whole counting of persons in Ghana is based on those who spend the census night in Ghana. So we call it a snapshot of the population. So although we say it's the midnight of 27th um, June 2021, operationally it's actually six hours before the midnight and six hours after the midnight. So it goes from 6 p.m. 27th of June to midnight, 27th of June, and then from midnight, 27th of June, to 6 a.m. of 28th of June. So that within that space, wherever you are, we can ask questions related to that. Indeed, on that night, there are some categories of people that we're going to, int we're going to enumerate, such as our floating population, our population that um, are on transit that day. You are moving from one point to another. We cannot exactly pinpoint where you are at the midnight. So we either interview you at your point of departure, or at a point of, of arrival. There are some questions in there like economic activity and mortality, which are specific to number of days. So for instance, if you want to get a sense of employment, unemployment in Ghana, we make reference to the economic activity that you've engaged in seven days prior to the census night. Again, somebody might have engaged in some activity over that seven day, over that specified seven days, but in the course of the year was engaged in some other activity. So for you to harmonize the responses, we want to get all activities that persons in Ghana engaged in seven days prior to the 27th. So that is why we always want to have a reference point for purposes of harmonizing responses across the enumeration days that we have. All right. Certainly, COVID protocols will be observed. Indeed. We have procured all the PPEs, the personal protective equipment. We have procured the um, face masks. We've pro procured the sanitizers. We have all the tissues, the liquid soaps, the Veronica buckets. And we've reached an advanced stage in getting the Ghana Health Service to, pro to give us vaccines to ensure that 
while we train the 76,500 um, field officers, they are vaccinated over the period. Indeed, some of them have already taken the job, the vaccination, and currently we are at the phase of collecting the information from the field officers in terms of those who have already been vaccinated, will pass this, over, this information over to the Ghana Health Service, and then those who are yet to be vaccinated will do the needful to ensure that they are. So we are adhering to all the COVID-19 protocols. Indeed, one of our cost overruns is as a result of ensuring that we don't keep more than 40 people in a classroom. Hither to COVID-19, we're going to put about 60 people in a classroom, but for COVID and adhering to the recommendations, we are keeping 40 people in a classroom, which will require that you need more spaces, you need more facilitators when we are training our field officers. Right. So they will be deployed on the 11th of June. That is the 76,500... 13th uh, of June. On the 13th of yes. June, rather. Okay. Yes. So the 76,000, or is it 75,500? 76,500. Okay. So the 76,500 enumerators will be deployed uh, from the 13th of June. Yes. What will they be doing from then? And for how long? Ahead of the enumeration of households is the need for us to do the chalking and listing of structures. The chalking means that we go around the country and all structures that are at different levels of completion and would potentially um, house persons, we ensure that these structures are chalked. The reason why we do the chalking before the listing is to ensure that we don't miss any household. So we go through a process which we call the serpentine approach to ensure that each structure within an enumeration area is chalked. Once that chalking is done, we go back to the structure and list the structure. What that means is that you take basic information on the structure in terms of what is the type of the structure, what is the level of completion of the structure, what is the use of the structure. This will give us some information that later on will feed into our understanding of the housing situation that we have in the country. In addition to that, during the listing exercise, we collect basic information on the households in the structure. So we would want to know the, 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 the information about the head of the household, i.e. the name of the person of the household, the contact details of the person of the household, the number of persons in there, and by sex. This information is also helpful for us during the enumeration stage when we start counting persons in Ghana. In Ghana, the process of counting is by what we call the de facto approach, and this simply means that you are counting persons who spend the night in Ghana. Other, in other countries, what they do is what, what we call the de jure approach, which simply means that instead of restricting yourself to persons who spend the night in Ghana, you do persons who usually spend the night in a household. So it's a de facto as against the de jure approach. Fortunately for us as a country, we deploy both technologies, but the final figure that we put out there is based on people who spent the night in Ghana. But once you go into our report, you get further information on um, those who usually spend the night in a household um, in Ghana. So we, we are able to provide um, both information. So this exercise is going to run from the 13th throughout to the 27th of um, June. June when we celebrate the census night. But we divide this phase, that is from the 13th to the 27th, in two phases. The actual listing work, we expect that it will be done over a seven-day period. So that would be from, from the, the 13th, 13th to about the 20th, the 20th of, June. Yes, of June. All right. So within that time frame, how will someone know whether their structure has been listed or not? And what should they do if they feel they've not been listed? So the outcome of that exercise is tangible in the sense that it's visible for that matter, in the sense that we chalk every structure. As I indicated, so if, if your structure has not been chalked, you know that your structure has, has not been chalked. So if as an individual you think it has not been chalked, the first advice is go around the structure and make sure that it's been chalked. You might not know that an enumerator has been there, he's done the chalking, and gone ahead to speak to a responsible adult in the household and that responsible adult has spoken on behalf of all members um, of the household. So you first of all look around whether that has not been done. If that has not been done, we advise that you speak to or inquire from other 
adult members in the household. That is, if you are not the head of the household. And obviously, if you are not the head of the household, the first person you need to speak to is the head of the household to find out whether the structure has been chalked and listed. And there's been an engagement. There has been an engagement. All right. Once this is done, we strongly advise that if there is evidence that the enumerator has not visited a structure, the enumerator has not visited your area, you've spoken to your neighbors and, and, and an enumerator has not been there, we have a call center and we entreat that by the 20th, you call. And that is why now we've allowed for a one week duration between the listing of structures and the start of enumeration. That one week duration would help us go back and ensure that every structure is um, chalked. So that you do a mop up within that one week, and also that one week allows us to do what we call the workload management ahead of the enumeration exercise. So we urge all persons in Ghana to make use of our call center in the event where there is a suspicion or a feeling that their structure has not been chalked. Right. So from listing of structures, we then move on to the enumeration of uh, people. I know that normally when that is done, you would do it for the president, vice president. What's the plan for that? Would that be done before the main um, enumeration for everyone else? Or that will be a special event, so to speak, to kick start the enumeration of people? The enumeration of the statesmen, as you indicated, the president, the vice president, and other statesmen that we've listed, would occur not even concurrently with the actual enumeration, but as I indicated, some enumeration would be done on the 27th, 9th, depending on the target group that we um, are dealing with on that night. As I indicated, some persons in Ghana would be on transit, so we wouldn't want to miss them because they're not going to spend the census night in a household or in an institution, they'll be in transit for that matter. So we need to start the enumeration on the 27th of, of, of the 27th um, of June 2021. In the, in the early hours of 28th June 2021, we are going to enumerate the president concurrently with enumeration going on all over the country. The main reason why we start with enumeration of the president is the national character of the exercise. So as the state's person, once he or there's evidence that he has availed himself for the exercise and that information is available to all of us, the general public in Ghana, then equips up interest that indeed this is a national um, activity. Then this will be followed by the enumeration of the vice president, the enumeration of the speaker of parliament, and then we'll move on in, in, in that order. Mm -hmm. And as the enumeration is going on, what should people do? What should people not do? What should they expect? Let me, if you don't mind, let me take this question a, a bit back and request that all persons in Ghana should familiarize themselves with the census um, instrument. We've provided a one-pager document that summarizes the census instrument, which we are making available on our website. And indeed, if you go on our website, the questionnaire is there, the field officer's manual is there. So we would urge all persons in Ghana the need for them to equip themselves with the questions that we're going to ask during the enumeration period. Indeed, once we start the data collection, all that we request for from persons in Ghana is the needed collaboration or cooperation, sorry, for that matter, with our enumerators. The enumerators would schedule, will look at your availability and schedule a time to interview you. Obviously, the first instance where they would be coming to your residence, they wouldn't know whether your availability is in the morning or your availability is in the evening. If by chance they come in and you're available, that is our preference. But in the instance when there's nobody in the household, they're going to leave a callback card behind and the expectation is that you fill it out, you leave it, and then the enumerators will pick it up, call and make arrangements with you in terms of the suitable time for the data collection exercise to be done. Again, this is over a 14-day period and we are confident that between the enumerator and various um, respondents, a schedule can be arranged for the exercise to be done. So all that we require is that cooperation with the enumerators. We are further assuring persons in Ghana that in the event where there is something suspicious about the enumerator or something that doesn't turn out to be pleasant to respondents, we've provided all our numbers. As I indicated, there's a call center. And once a call is placed, 
would quickly follow up either from the district level, the regional level, or even the case can be escalated to the um, head office for the necessary steps to be taken. Because we don't want a massive surge of calls in the last days of the data collection exercise, we are urging all persons in Ghana from the 8th of July to look out whether they have been enumerated either as an individual or as household. Look out for a callback card, which might have been placed somewhere that you are yet to see. In the event where you don't find the callback card and within your neighborhood there has been the presence of um, a field officer in there, we humbly request that make use of our call center and once that is done, we would ensure that your household is enumerated. So the date that we need to look out for is from the 8th of July. Of July. We are pleading that let us not wait to the 11th so that we get a massive surge of people calling in indicating that they have not been enumerated. Um, is the GSS fully funded for this exercise? And how much are you spending? We are spending 521.3 million Ghana CDs on this um, exercise. And Ghana Studies Car Service has received the, all the needed funding for the exercise in terms of mobilization. And we take this opportunity to, and to mention to all our enumerators that unlike other experiences, this 2021 population and housing census has funding for the enumeration exercise already ring fenced. And once they go through the process, normally the delays arise based on the clearing of the enumerators. That is why sometimes there are lacks in the delay. But once we are successful with clearing, all our field officers, after the data collection exercise, they've handed over all the data that we need, which is critical. They've handed over all the logistics that were given to them. Most important is the tablets. Then it paves the way to do the needful by paying them whatever outstanding money there is. A group called the Center for Socioeconomic Studies complained about the survey instrument that is going to be used to identify ethnicity. And they specifically point to number four, the fourth column, which refers to the ever ethnic group, which doesn't have subgroupings with their specific nomenclatures. Why is it that that is the way it is. And this group is complaining that the other ethnic groups have their subgroupings, but not the other ethnic group. Let me put on record that this has been the situation since the 2000 census, the 2010 census, and in 2021, we are seeing the same. The concern has come up because the other seven groups, as you rightly say, said, have sub-ethnic groups for purposes of facilitating the data collection exercise. At Ghana Studies Car Service for both 2000 and 2010, although we have the sub-ethnic groups in the instrument, we do have them in there just for purposes of eliciting the right response. This came to light in previous censuses, maybe the 1960 or the 1984 census, partly because with some of the major ethnic groups, like Akan, you can identify about 19 other sub-ethnic groups. And some of the sub-ethnic ethnic groups over time have tended to be more pronounced than the major ethnic groups. So if you ask somebody, based on our experience in the field, what is your ethnic group, instead of the person saying, I'm an Akan, the person identifies more with a tree, a Fanti, and so on. So what you're saying essentially is when people give a response, based on the response that is given, you will categorize it under the large ethnic group. Under grouping. the major ethnic group, yes. All right. Uh, recent events has led to a lot of um, awareness about whether there are attempts to suppress one ethnic group or not. And in the light of this coming out, some it may not be the GSS's intention. However, others with a certain agenda or ideological view may seek to use this data for political gerrymandering or for any other reason. Maybe even it gets it is data that is made available to institutions that determine whether we have a new district, a new constituency, and the like. How would you respond to that? Thank you, Jifa. Indeed, let me emphasize what I said earlier on. Once an enumerator comes to you and asks the question, what is your ethnic group? It is self-identifying. So it's the respondent who would have to say, I'm, I'm an Eve. This the person says, I'm Hodume, which is those who come from 
the whole Hohoi area, if they say Ampadume, how would they then be classified? Based on our trial censuses, based on our experience in the past, and our engagement during the data collection stage, the broad understanding that we got was that Eves would always identify themselves as Eves. If this issue had come up a week, a month, sorry, two months ago, six months ago, during our consultation period, it wouldn't have been an issue at all. And indeed, it is not an issue now. If we just want to see the sub-ethnic the sub -ethnic groups for the ever uh, major group, for purposes of facilitating accurate data, this can be done. And already we are in discussions with the um, regional house of chiefs, the president of the regional house of chiefs. And if the recommendation is that as part of the questioning, we would want to see the sub-ethnic groups for ever, Ghana Studies Card Service will gladly do that on account that that is going to facilitate um, the data that we need. But, but certainly that has not been the trend since 2000. That has not been the trend since 2000. Okay. But I would want to hint that once the process of the data collection for 2021 PAC varies from that of 2000 and 2010, it's likely to affect our ability to compare. Mm. Because in previous censuses, the question has been, what is your ethnic group? And our experience in the field is that once you are speaking to an Eve, there is a 100% chance that you would hear I'm an Eve, okay. rather than hearing a sub-ethnic group, which will warrant the need for you to probe. And indeed, if now it's going to come up that there's a sub-ethnic group that we are not aware, given what has, happening, what has happened in the past couple of days, we're going, to, we're going to make this information available to our enumerators anyway. And now we are getting some sub-ethnic groups that are languages, some names that are coming up are, that are languages, but that they are not sub-ethnic groups. So and there's there, a there fine be distinction between... There. Yes. Right. But once these things are coming up, we're going to work with the House of... the regional House of Chiefs, as I indicated, get... Uh, I'm told there are about three major sub-ethnic groups, not languages. Once we get this, we're going to add it to our training and ensure that the enumerators are aware of it so that once they approach the respondent, the households, and it comes up, they're going to identify with it. So, so the data from the sub-ethnic groups will not be used for any specific thing. At the end of the day, when the data is compiled, it's mainly about the major ethnic groups. That's Indeed, that has been the be. position of Ghana Studies Car Service since the 2000 population housing census, 2010 population housing census, and indeed the 2021 population housing census, we're not going to do anything different. What we're going to make sure is that for the, from the 2021 population housing census, even the micro data that is going to come out would suppress the data on sub-ethnic groups so that even if it's not Ghana Studies Car Service, that data would not be used by any agency. As I said, it's just to facilitate the arrival of the major ethnic group um, category. All right. And uh, we're wrapping up, sir. Um, Prof, any final words? Um, what do you want to say to everyone as this uh, process starts? Jifa, this exercise, as I indicated, happens only once in 10 years, and I'm happy you emphasize that point. We should not allow this 10-year exercise to go for us to say that it's a missed opportunity. My message to all persons in Ghana is that let's avail ourselves for the exercise. Let's keep in mind that this is not a partisan exercise. This is not a government exercise. This exercise is about inclusiveness, we want to get everybody on board, irrespective of your religious affiliation, irrespective of your ethnic um, affiliation, irrespective of the remotest, remotest part of the country where you live. It is the only opportunity that would give a voice to every person who would spend the census night in Ghana. And indeed, even with persons who have people outside the country in the last 12 months, information on them will be collected. We need to give this exercise the needed um, attention to ensure that we get the right data for the needed development that this, co this country requires. Thank you very much, uh, Professor you. Enim, government statistician. Thank you for joining us on First Take. Thank you, Jifa. You've been watching First Take, where I've been in conversation with a government statistician, Professor Samuel Enim. Thank you for joining us.